God, that was a little weak. If we're going to war, you better get louder than that. I said, you got your swords with you. If the enemy heard that, yeah. <laughs> you want to know what they're thinking? They're thinking, that done got y'all whipped. And the enemy's thinking, boy, this is going to be easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> boy, <laughs> my goodness. Wow, you better get a line on the inside of you. Oh, my goodness. Get the roar of the line of the tribe of Judah. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Praise God. But if you got your swords with you, Joshua, or Joshua, chapter number 10. Uh, that's where we're going tonight. Verse number 1. Joshua chapter 10, verse number 1. I'm just going to read verse 1 through about number 15. I don't know that we'll get that far, but that's where we're going to read it down to. Joshua 10, verses 1 through 15. This is what the Bible said. Now it came to pass when Adonai, Zadok, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai and he had earth utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and its king, so he had done to Ai and its king. And how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and they were among them. That they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city like one of the royal cities and because it was greater than Ai and all of its men were mighty. Therefore Adonai Zadok, or Zedek, king of Jerusalem, he said to Hoham, king of Hebron, Pyram, king of Jermuth, Jephi, king of Lachish, and Debar, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me that we may attack Gibeon. For he has made peace with Joshua and with the, five, or with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, the kings of Hebron, the kings of Jermuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon gathered together, and they went up, they and all their armies, and they camped before Gibeon, and they made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal, saying, Do not forsake your servants. Come up to us quickly. Save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua therefore came up upon them suddenly having marched all night from Gilgal. So the Lord, I love this, so the Lord routed them before Israel, killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon. He chased them along the road that goes to Beth Horon, and he struck them down as far as Azekah and Makeda. And it happened as they fled before Israel, and they were on the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Ezekiel, and they died. There was more who died from the hailstones than those whom the children of Israel killed with a sword. And Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said, in the sight of Israel. Now this takes some faith. Joshua said in the sight of all the children of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and it did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there has been no day like that before it or after it that the Lord had heeded the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all of Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. And God, I give you praise for what you've done for Joshua. God, I give you praise for what you are doing for us at Prospect. And Lord, every single day in our lives, God, you are God, and besides you, there is no other. 
And Lord God, this is they had to call upon Joshua. Lord, every day we have to call upon you. And Lord, just as though you showed up for them, we know you show up for us as well. And Lord God, we need you tonight to show up in this Bible study. Lord God, reveal your truth to us, Lord God, with divine revelation and wisdom from heaven. We promise to give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And the church said, Amen. 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 Praise God. It said, Now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai and how he had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and its king. So he had done to Ai and its king. And how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. And so we find out right here that, that another king now is hearing about what Joshua has done uh, of taking over Jericho. Y'all know the story, everybody that's been studying along with us in the book of Joshua. We know how Joshua has heeded the Lord's voice and how they took over Jericho. They marched around the walls of Jericho and the Lord made the wall come tumbling down. Praise God, they took Jericho, took the city, took the king of Jericho, and took the whole land. And we know that the same thing happened to Ai. That little bitty city that first when they went in, that, that Ai kicked Israel's tail. But Joshua and all the men of Israel, they later had to turn around and, and, and had to repent and had to, had to get the sin out of the camp. And we find out that when they went back into Ai, the Lord was on their side. And God said, now I'm able to fight your battle for you. Praise the Lord. And they took Ai. And all the kings that was in the land of Canaan and heard it. I want you to understand something. That, that when Joshua, I want you to see this picture. I wish I had a map up here. But this picture of this. Here's Canaan. Here's the whole, can everybody see this circle? Here's an imaginary circle I'm drawing out here. This circle. Now where Joshua come through, he come through in the center. Jericho and Ai was right in the center of Canaan. There was North Canaan and there was South Canaan. And Jericho and Ai was right in the middle. Yeah. Woo. So they had this, <laughs> he had this all figured out. He had this all planned out. And so he takes over right in the middle. He knocks the wall down in the center of Canaan. And he takes control of North Canaan. And so the king of the south, his name is Adonai Zedek. And it says that he's hearing about what Joshua has done and what the Lord is doing through Joshua and how he's took Jericho, how he's took Ai, and now how the inhabitants of Gibeon, who Gibeon was people of Canaan. Y'all remember they were the ones who lied to Joshua. They were the ones who dressed up in, in the clothes and made them look shabby and they acted like they'd come a long, long way away. But the Bible said they just come from right up the road. Yeah, the story we studied the last few weeks. But Joshua made an oath with them and said, we'll let you live, but you're going to have to serve our God. Right, yeah. Then he finds out that these folks had lied to him. Yeah. And he said, you know what? I'm still, because I swore to you in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm still going to let you live, but you are going to be servants for the Lord. In other words, you're going to be woodcutters. Yeah. You're, you're going to be something to do for the Lord. You're going to cut wood for the Lord. And, and so he's going to still let them live. But these people of Gideon were mighty men. They were royal men. They did not uh, come to Joshua and give in because they were scared. Hear me now. These people did not come and give in to Joshua because they were fearful. They come in and give in to Joshua because they had heard about the Lord God and because they respected the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had understood something. There's something different about the God 
that they serve. And it's something totally different than the gods that the gods of Canaan serve. They, they serve the, the nature God. They serve the sun God. And I ain't never seen the sun do nothing but burn me. Now, they serve the moon God. And I ain't never seen the moon do nothing for me at all. Uh, they serve the tree gods. And I ain't never seen the tree do nothing for me at all but give me a little bit of breath and a little bit of wind at times. Uh, but i tell you something about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, you can call on the name of God uh, and he'll show up for you. Uh, my God, and when you're coming against the wall at Jericho, uh, you can march around it six times uh, on day six. Uh, but on day seven, uh, my God, you just march around it seven times. And then you give a great big shout and you watch the molecular structure change uh, and watch the walls start coming down. Uh, there's something about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, that God shows up for them. Uh, I'm telling you that there's no way humanly possible that they should be able to win the wars that they're winning. Every one of the nations and cities and states that they're coming up against. Uh, but there's something about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, and so Gideon said, I'm not going back with a God, a dead God. I'm going on with living God's side. I'm going over here. And I might have to be a slave for the rest of my life. But I know when I die, I'm going to be in front of a living God. I know this life. What is this life? It's a puff of smoke. It's but a vapor. Folks, we need to understand that tonight. What is this life? This life is nothing. This life is short. This life is but a puff of smoke. I'm telling you, we're not promised tomorrow. None of us in this room, we're not promised the next breath we breathe. Not one of us in this room. I'm not trying to scare you tonight. But I'm telling you, we better be ready. We better be prepared to meet our God. Because there's one thing about it. Either we're going to meet God by the way of the grave. Or by the way of the rapture. One way or another. God's coming. And we're going to meet him. One way or the other. One of these days. You will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. One way or the other. You will see uh, the nail scarred hands uh, of the blood stained Jesus. Uh, one way or the other, you will see him uh, and he will see you. Uh, one way or the other, you will have to answer for what you have done. Amen. One way or the other, Amen. you will hear the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. Or you will either hear the words, Depart from me. For I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. And I believe these men of Gibeon, they said, you know what? I think there's something about this God that we're going to go. We're going to go to their side. And so this king had heard about how this people of Canaan, this town of Gibeon, they had went to the, the children of Israel and they had made a pact with them. They said, we want to be on your side now. And so the king had heard that. And he became fearful now because Israel now is not fighting just with God. But now they have Gideon on their side. And Gideon is supposed to be on Adam and Zedek's side. They are part of Canaan. They're a mighty, mighty army. They're a royal army. They're a mighty force to be reckoned with. They're much stronger than AI. They're much stronger than the rest of them. But you know what? God had already saw fit to, to humble them boys down, to go over to Joshua and say, hey, we want to join the living God. We want to come be woodcutters. We'll, we'll be slaves, whatever. They might have deceived and worked and lied their way in, but God had it all figured out to where they was going to come. You'll see the plan here in a moment. It's going to all unfold, and you'll see that these boys are not much different than you and I. You'll see it in just a moment. And so this king is now, he's getting aggravated, he's getting fearful, because he says now we're not just fighting against Israel. Now we're fighting against Israel. Now we're fighting against their God. Now we're fighting against Gibeon. And so it said he feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city like one of the royal cities. And because it was greater than Ai. And all of its men were mighty. Verse 3 said, Therefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, he sent to 
Oh, hang on. I don't know if I'm pronouncing all that right. Just, just think it is. Oh, hang on. Ain't you glad your mom and daddy didn't name you that? What's your name? Oh, hang on. I bought a whole ham one time. That thing's pretty good. Woo! Yeah. See how my mind gets sidetracked? Get out of the flesh, Chad. Come on. What if that's your soft form? If that was the other kind. Anyway. So he called Hoham, king of Hebron, and Pyram, king of Jermuth, and Jephi, king of Lachish, and Deborah, or Deborah, Deborah, king of Eglon, and Sam, come up to me and help me that we may attack Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Notice something right here. This king, this Adonizadet right here, notice something. He was fearful. But what he said, he called for five cities and states of Canaan. I want you, first of all, I want to prove something to you. Do you understand that Israel is fighting a battle right now overseas today? Now, I'm not talking about in Bible times. I'm talking about right now today. Israel's fighting a battle. And Palestine today claims that that land that Palestine used to own that. That Palestine was once a nation and they owned all of that. Yep. First of all, this proves that Israel didn't come in and take it from a one nation person. This shows, the Bible shows that when Israel come in, it wasn't a one form nation. It was a city state. The Bible shows it clearly that it was not a one unified nation. That this Jadonizer deck, if, if he hadn't called these five kitties, these five cities, state, whatever you want to call them, these people together, they would have never been unified in the first place. They was different cities, different states, if you will. And he calls them together and he says, we got a problem. We've got a problem. And, and he says, come up to me and help me that we may attack Gibeon. Notice he did not say that we may attack Israel. He knew better than to go against Israel. He knew better than to go against the apple of God's eye. He knew better than to go against God's own. He knew better than to go against the people that God said they better not come against them. He knew he said, we're going to go against Gibeon. Yeah. And so, in other words, they're going to try to put fear yeah. into the, anybody else of Canaan to try to make Gibeon look right. uh, bad to show to, that anybody else, you better not join with Israel right. or this is what we're going to do to yeah. you. Right. They're a terrorist organization. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see where it started back then? And you see where it's going today? There was terrorists then. There are terrorists today. There was trying to... It's the same thing that's been going on for thousands of years. And they're still... But they will not go against God. They know better than the sin. Now watch here. He says these words. For it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. They cannot stand it when Israel has peace. The enemy cannot stand when Israel is at peace. That's why the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob told us in the Bible, said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The enemy always tried to come against and divide and destroy and to conquer Israel. That's why all of its life it has been fought against. It has been come against every way they turn. They've been trying to be annihilated everywhere they go. Why is there so much anti-Semitism? Why even in America do we have on our college campuses, do we have people protesting in America? Do we have people with holding up signs saying, I hate Jews in America and pro-Palestine? Why do we have people in our White House that are waving Palestinian flags when these people had rather spit on America and throw you off of a cliff and, and had rather see you burn? But we're raising up their flag in our White House and, and, and promoting them and promoting death 
to the Jewish people, to the Jewish state of Israel. Oh, I come to get real with you tonight. I, I, I know when this, this may not be this may not be shouting preaching tonight, but I come to get real with you because this is real what we're going through, and it was real what they were going through. And tonight, I want you to see with your eyes. It's the same thing that was going on then that's going on today. The enemy has not changed his mo. His mo is still the same to destroy the people of Israel and to destroy the state of Israel. Why does he want to do that? Because the Bible says there's coming a day when the same Jesus that you seen leave, my God in heaven, the same Jesus that you have seen leave shall so come in like manner you have seen him go. And that same Jesus, his feet's going to come to touch down on the Mount of Olives, praise God. And the Bible said the enemy can't stand, they can't stand, praise the Lord, the thought of having Jesus come back and have a place to rule and reign. He's tried. He's tried everything he can to stop that from happening. Come on, Amen. You want to know why? Good, wrong, There's something wrong. The That's it, brother. There's something wrong. There's something wrong in our world today. We we have been so diluted to the matter. We because we I, I don't understand why we can't. More people can't see it. We, we, we have been, I, I don't know, the, the programmed, I guess you would say. Scales. We've become programmed and scaled. That's it. To, 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 to look past this stuff. And, and in America, home of the free. Land of the free. Home of the brave. Here we are. And we got this flowing over in our White House. And, and oh, It'll make you sick. Yeah. It makes you sick. He's revealing it right now. There's so many revelations. There's nothing that will, that will be done in darkness that shall not be exposed. That's right. It'll all be exposed. Now get this right here. He says, come. And he says, come help us. They made peace with Joshua with the children of Israel. Verse 5. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jermuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, they gathered together and they went up, they and all their armies, and they camped before Gibeon and they made war against it. And the men of Gibeon, they sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal. Remember, Gilgal is the place where the children of Israel first crossed the, the, the land. Remember when they crossed the water and, and they had the Ark of the Covenant? That's where they put the memorial stones at. That's the place where the, the manna stopped coming down and the first place where they eat the, the fruit of the land. There was so much that happened at Gilgal that Joshua said, this is where we're going to live at. So that's where they went back and that's where the children of Israel stayed was at Gilgal. So there's so much stuff that happened at Gilgal. So that's where they was at. And so the people of Gibeon had to go send back to Gilgal saying, Hey, we are under attack up the road here. Don't forsake your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us. Now get this verse right here. So Yahshua ascended from Gilgal. He and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. I want you to understand something now. Just like those people, they were liars and deceivers. And they come to Yahshua even though they were deceivers. And, and they weren't really who they said they were. But they come and they ask for grace and mercy. And they said, we, we need to be, uh, uh, make a covenant with you. Uh, and he said, you know what? Uh, I'm going to let you live. And I'm going to make a covenant with you. Uh, I'll let you live. Uh, and then they get in a bind. Uh, and the enemy comes to kill them. Uh, and steal from them. Uh, and destroy them. Uh, and what happened? They had to send back to Yeshua. Or Yahshua. And say, hey, don't forsake us. We need your help. Uh, 
You see, we're not so different now, are we? Because a lot of us are the same way. We're liars and deceivers when we go to Yahshua. And we're not who we say we are. We're not truly sincere when we go to the king. We're not really sincere when we go to him. We know in our heart we don't truly mean what we say. We just want to get a pass for the day. Lord, we need your help right now. And we know down deep inside that we don't really what we're going to try, but we figure we probably ain't going to make it. We're probably not really. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all don't get quiet on me now. Well, we're not really so different. We got a, we got questions in our mind. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to live this life. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this stuff or not. But but here we're going. We're going to try. But here we are. The enemy comes at us left and right. And we have to cry out to God. We have to cry out to Yahshua. And say, don't forsake us. We need your help. Descend from glory and he comes down quickly and he'll show up for you. He'll come in. Hallelujah. He'll show up. Oh my God. And he'll make sure that your enemies that are nipping at your heel, he will take them. The Bible said so Joshua ascended. Yahshua ascended. Yeshua descended. Yahshua has to us sin, but Yeshua do sin. Glory to God. And he said he and all the people of war with him, all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Here is a commandment with a promise connected to it. Sister Connie, you just said fear is a liar. That is the truth. And right here, Joshua, God has just told him, don't you fear one bit. Don't be afraid. I don't want you to be scared. But God, there's five kings and their armies that are coming after me. God could have said, did I ask you for your excuses? I didn't ask you to open your mouth. I said, don't be afraid. Don't fear. Listen, we got to listen to what God said. We got to worry about what our flesh is telling us. Fear takes away your ability to fight the battle that God has got and put in front of you. You can't fight the battle when you got fear in your heart. Fear paralyzes you, but faith mobilizes you. Faith will put you into action and cause you to begin to move and march and rank. Faith will cause you to pick up your weapon and start to swing it, even though you can't see the giant in front of you. My God, but fear will cause you to hide and quiver and shake, but faith will cause you to say, where are you at, big boy? I've got the word of God on the inside of me. And look at where you are. I'm about to throw it out. I've had enough of your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It'll cause something to rise up on the inside of you. And it'll begin to flow out of you like rivers of living water. And so he says, don't fear. I don't care how many is coming at you. I don't care how many armies. I don't care how many kings. I don't care how many confederations they have. He said, I am the Lord. And I told you don't fear. And his commandment had a promise connected to it. Ain't you glad that when God gives you a commandment, it's got a promise connected to it. Woo! All God's promises are yes and amen. And he said right here, do not fear them. Here's the promise. For I have delivered them into your hands. Not a man of them shall stand before you. In other words, now they might be five kings, now they might be five armies. But I'm God, and besides me there is no other. He said they might be five armies. 
They might be five kings. They might be a bunch of generals. They might be a bunch of lieutenants. But I am the great I am. All I gotta do is speak, and the host of heaven's angel armies will go down, and they will capture them and cause them to stand. Where I tell them to stand, I can cause the ground to open up and swallow them up. This is something that God's already done. Now, this is not something that Brother Chad's is making up in sci-fi land. This is something that God's Word has already proven that He's done in other places. I can cause the ground to open up and swallow. 185,000 men. One angel can kill 185,000 men in one night. Woo! One angel. Woo! There's nothing that God can do. So don't fear. Fear is a liar. Fear is a deceiver. Fear is a manipulator. Fear will play with your mind and it will destroy you. And it will lie to you and it will cause you to panic and it will call you understand that fear fear is a, a will do nothing but cause you to stress and stress is a killer it is a killer it will cause your blood pressure to go up cause your head to begin to pound migraines to come it's a killer Oh, yeah, you begin to worry. And I prayed over my car before I got in this morning, and I didn't have no fear. Amen. There you go. There you go. That's it. When you lay the fear down, and you just go ahead and say, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. That's it. That's it. I know that I know. I know that I know. That's it. That's it. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Get under my feet and stay there this very day. That's right. Amen. That's it. That's it. Perfect love casts out all fear. And Jesus is perfect love. And once you know him and the power of his resurrection, you know perfect love. And there's no, you begin to understand him. And, and that's my prayer in these discipleship classes is that we learn him and, and know him that much more. And the more we know him, the more intimate we learn him. This is my prayer. The, the more intimate we become with him. Oh, are y'all getting quiet? Yeah. The more intimate, and they say intimate, that, that don't sound right, Brother Chad. Oh, yeah, that's set right. That's exactly what I meant to say. The more intimate, the more intimate time. Because let me tell you something. If you got a spouse and you don't get intimate with that spouse, well, you're talking about God, Brother Chad. Yeah, I'm talking about God. you got to have a long time with God. Just your church time with God ain't doing you that much. It's doing you good. But you need some time with God where it's just you and the Master. When it's just you and Him all by yourself. Where you can be you and He can talk to you. And He can explain to you. And He can reveal to you. And you can confide in Him. And He can confide in you. My God, somebody hear me tonight. I'm talking about where you can know that you know that you know that there is no other friend like him. That you will understand that you have no fear because you got nothing to worry about. I promise you, he will become so real to you that every single move you make, every single move you make, you'll know he's there. He's there. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. That's it. You got to. You got to. That's it. One on one. One on one. That's right. Yes, sir. That's it. Absolutely. If you will draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to you. That's his words. That's not mine. That's God's word. And he says these words here. He said, do not fear them, for I've delivered them into your hand. 
Not a man of them shall stand before you. Joshua, therefore, it came upon them suddenly. I love that part right there. Because God just made him a promise. And you notice that Joshua didn't give himself time to discredit God's promise. Somebody hear that? Joshua didn't give himself time to discredit God's promise. He didn't give himself time to talk himself out of it. He didn't give himself time to say, well, that might not have been God. That might have been my flesh talking. That might have been some God might have been talking to my neighbor. No, Joshua said, I heard you, Lord, and let's go. He didn't say that. He didn't say it might have been for somebody else. He said, if not me, then who? Let's roll. It was just like on flight 93 on September the 11th of 2001 when nobody else was stepping up. Them guys stood up on that plane and their final words before they hit the ground was, let's roll. And that's exactly what they did. They took that plane over from them hijackers and they might have hit the ground and lost their lives, but they saved thousands of others. That's exactly right here. Joshua said, we might lose our lives, but I don't believe we will because God said we wouldn't. And so we're going for it. He came suddenly. He said, right now, he ascended from Gilgal. And he said, Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgal. Understand this, from Gilgal to Gibeon. I looked that up. From Gilgal to Gibeon, he marched all night long. He had to climb 3,300 feet. That was 3,300 feet. He had to march 20 miles, hard marching, 8 to 10 hours uphill, 3,300 feet. And then the fight five kings and five armies. Yeah. Woo! Praise and the whole way there, yeah. Joshua could have talked himself out of it. But you know what? I believe the whole time he's marching up that hill, he said, my God said they're coming down. Yeah. My God said, you know what? And here's another thing. Joshua could have even said these words. You know what? I shouldn't have made that oath with them giving you nights. I, I shouldn't have made it. They lied to me. Here's a way we can get rid of them. But you know what else? He said, I made that oath, and I'm going to stick with that oath. And, and the only thing Joshua was held to was that he couldn't kill them himself. But he said... I'm going to bear with that oath and I'm going to spare their life and I'm going to stick with them. And every child of God ought to be the same way. If we see somebody in need, whether they look like us, dress like us, act like us or not, if we see somebody in need, we need to get in there with them and say, hey, you might not know who I am. I, I might not know who you are, but I come here to help you. I come, you would be amazed at how the love of Jesus will change someone's heart. It will. It will. And so the Bible said all night long, so the Lord, because Joshua came, you see, and here's another thing. And I'll go on. Here's another thing. The Lord... Sometimes the Lord waits to see what our participation is going to be before He does His thing. Somebody hear me now. Sometimes the Lord will wait before He moves in your situation to see how much, how far you're going to follow Him. How much are you going to be involved in this? How much participation are, what are you, how much are you going to put into this? I've told you the story about the two blind dudes. The Bible said there's two blind dudes that followed Jesus everywhere. And I'm thinking, what? How does two blind guys follow anything? They're blind. I mean, how? But they follow Jesus. And the Bible said everywhere that Jesus went, these blind dudes were following him. And the Bible said that he went in this house. And we know that it wasn't his because the Bible says foxes have bows and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So we know it wasn't Jesus' house. 
And so, but the Bible said when Jesus walked up in that house, that these two blind dudes walked right in there with him. And I'm sure the people that owned the house was like, uh, okay. Jesus we know, but well, who's the two blind dudes? But as soon as Jesus, Brother David, as soon as Jesus walked in that house, Brother Mike, as soon as he walked through the house, he turned around. As soon as they crossed the threshold, as soon as they crossed that threshold, Jesus spins around and said, what is it that you need? And they said, sir, that we would receive sight. And he said, Pfft. and he breathed on them. And right then, immediately, they turned around and they could see from that hour on. They could see. They received their sight, but they had to follow him across the threshold. Sometimes Jesus wants to see, or you want to trust him enough to follow him. Even if you had to follow him into somebody else's house, even if you don't know where you're going, do you trust him enough? Even though you feel like you're following, you don't know what. You're going into the lines then. Do you trust him? Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Amen. And so the Bible says sometimes God wants to see how far you're going to go. And Joshua went all the way. He marched all night long. Verse 10. So the Lord routed them before Israel. He killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon. He chased them along the road that goes to Bethlehem. He struck them down as far as Ezekiel and Makeda. Notice every verb in that whole verse right there is singular. Meaning that God done it all by himself. He did it with, with Joshua's with Joshua's participation, of course, but God didn't need it. God didn't need it, but he wanted it. He wanted Joshua to be there to participate, but God did it all on his own. It said the Lord routed them. In other words, the GPS, that's that's God's positioning system. That's what GPS stands for. God's positioning system. God positioned them. That means he routed them to what you, my Lord. Can you, can you just ever, when we play checkers, that's what when I picture God, I'm just thinking, he just picked them up and put them over here. Pick, what's that guy's name? The painter on Channel 10. Y'all remember that guy? Bob Ross. Bob Ross, thank you. Yes. Had his little tree. I'm not saying God's a stone. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing like that. I'm just saying, I picture God saying, we're going to put him right over here. <laughs> That's just what I say, God, in this situation. We're going to move him right, happy little fella right over here. <laughs> he does places. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. He will. That's exactly right. He places us exactly where we're supposed to be. And that's what it said. The Lord routed them and then killed them with a great slaughter, chased them on the road, and struck them down. So he did all of that. Verse 11, and it happened as they fled before Israel. They were on the descent, the rest of them, they were on the descent of Bethlehem. That the Lord, not only did he do all of that, now the Lord is casting down large hailstones. Wow. I'm thinking, wow, Lord, as I'm reading this, now there's hailstones coming down from heaven as far as Ezekiel. And they died. And it said they were more who died from the hailstones than those whom the children of Israel were killed with swords. So God's killing more than the armies are killing. Remember the promise that God told Joshua. He said not one of them is going to stand before you. In other words, I'm going to do the work. The battle don't belong to you. The battle belongs to me. Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. He's telling him, I'm going to show you, Joshua, you have nothing to fear. It's so amazing. So amazing what God does here. And then Joshua spoke. But Joshua, he, he still, still, Joshua don't sit back and just let God do all the work. He still goes, puts his hand in the plow because a man... That puts us that puts us in the plow and looks back. We still gotta put our hand in the plow. We still gotta work. We still gotta do. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. 
And he said in the sight of Israel, this right here, get this, y'all. Son, stand still over Gideon. I'm going to stop for a minute. You got to understand something. The, the war's already being won. Why couldn't Joshua just leave it alone and attack? Yeah. Why couldn't it just stop? The war's already been won. But no, Joshua has got that radical faith. Yeah. Joshua's got that faith that says, hey, something else is fixing to happen. God promised me that something major is fixing to happen and that I was going to see the glory of God. And so I believe that what God said is going to happen. And so if God spoke to me, I believe that I'm able to go to my Father and I'm able to ask my Father anything and I'm able to believe and He will do it. So Joshua said, it, Lord, it, it might not even come to pass, but I'm going to go out on a limb in faith and I'm going to say it in front of everybody. I'm going to step out and believe in faith and say it in front of everybody. Come on. And I'm going to believe. Yes, and I'm going to believe that God's going to honor it. Woo! And so you know what he does? In the middle of the battlefield, in the middle of the battlefield, Joshua looks up and he says, Son, stand still. Moon! And he tells the moon, all the way, what in the valley of, what is that? Ajabal, Alabal, whatever. Ajalon, yes. Moon in the valley of Ajalon. And so the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. Listen, you can actually go and study this out. It is recorded in Yale University. NASA has even talked about this. There is a day that dates all the way back where well, that there's one day in history where it appeared as though time stood still for a day. There's one day in history. And NASA, as, as crazy as that place is, it is recorded that there is a day. And it goes all the way back to Joshua's day. In Yale University, as liberal as that place is, it is recorded that there is a day where the sun, of course, they ain't going to say the sun stood still because, of course, we know the planets, they go all around. But, but you know what? They want to argue that the sun stands still and the planets go around the... Listen, they have no, they have no argument saying the sun rises and the sun sets. But when it comes to the Bible saying the sun stood still, they want to argue then. Anyways, that's right, that's right. I promise, let's take the Bible. God did it. So he, we're, we're, we're not, he didn't, we don't have to understand all this stuff. Yes, sir. We just believe and we know by faith. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. That's it. Why ain't you mess yourself all up sitting there trying to Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you couldn't Oh yes. Believe. Joyful. Faith. Joyful. Faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Without faith it is impossible to please God. And a lot of people, we got so wrapped up in having to prove every single thing. Everything. That's it. You've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. But that is, it is very interesting. You can look that up and see that. It is. Uh, one day, it is proven. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? Now, I've not stopped to go look off in the book of Jasher. I've not did that. But I'm not telling you to either, but so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there has been no day like that before or after it that the Lord heeded the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. And then Joshua returned and all of Israel with him to the camp at 
Gilgal. Oh, the, just think about this. When Joshua comes his son, stand still. I don't know how God done it. I just know he done it. I don't know how the sun stood still. I don't know if it was or if I don't know how he done it. I just know it was done. Amen. And I know this. When it didn't get dark for a whole day, Joshua was like, come on, Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. And then when the sun went down, I could see Joshua put his sword in his sheath and say, I'm going home. <laughs> Woo, it's time. Woo, about to sweat off his brow and say, it's been a long day. Matter of fact, it's been 24 hours we've been out here slaying. So we're going home. We're going to get some rest. God made that sun stand still today and thank you, Jesus. I bet you they had a Holy Ghost breakdown all the way back to Gilgal. It was a long 20 miles uphill to that place, but it was a good 20 miles back downhill. Amen. Thank God. It was a Holy Ghost party going down. Praise God. That's right. Holy Ghost party don't stop. Woo! Oh, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The Lord fought for them. Ain't that awesome? That's awesome. And he still fights for us. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. That's it. Oh, yeah. Woo. Glory. Yes. Do what, brother? That's right. A lot of times we don't slow down up to see. You're correct. We'll miss it if we're not careful. We'll miss it if we're not careful. We miss it. So many times that, that we, we pray for things and God does it and, and we're like, we miss it. We miss it because we, we're looking at other things. We do. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your study tonight, your word. And God, we give you all praise and glory for your word, for what you've done for Joshua and for the children of Israel and for Gideon. Lord, for what you are doing for us today. Lord, every single day, Lord, we need you. God, we always need you. And I just pray that you take this word now. Lord God, that you would cause this word to come alive in us this week. God, that we would chew on this word all week, God. Let it let it just take root in our hearts, Lord. And Lord, that we would just chew on it all week long, God. And, and let it be alive in us, Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus, to, to know that you are there at all times. Father, touch my brothers and sisters tonight. Lord, and whatever they may need. Anybody watching my video, God, I pray, touch them, Lord God, in whatever way they may know. If they somebody that don't know you, Jesus, Lord God, I pray that tonight, Lord God, that they'd call out on your name. Father, says, he says, Lord, pray this simple prayer and believe. And Father, I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I believe that you come and die for me. And God, I ask you to come into my heart and save me and wash me. Wash away my sins and cause me to be whiter than snow. Lord, I believe you died for me and rose for me. And now I want to live for you from this day forward. Lord, write my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life and help me to never be the same. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, thank you for saving me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer.